Hello and welcome to Horror Boys. It's a podcast on the internet. I'm Austin, joined as always by... Chris. And Isaiah. That's right, and we are the Horror Boys. We're the ones from the title, and today we're yeah. talking about a horror movie, because it's a, a, it's a weekly thing. We do it every week. We always talk about a horror movie. Well, we're talking about a... a... In air quotes, horror movie. No, it's a horror movie. It is a horrible movie. Uh, Legally speaking. But yeah, it. Uh, we are talking about it, but as you saw from the title, but if somehow you clicked on this video without reading the title, you are watching us talking about Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, which, you know... The f- final, also in air quotes. I mean, to be fair to this series, and you'll see why... This is far more true than it was any of the times we had Jason say that. <laughs> <laughs> far more true. We're talking about, okay. You'll, you'll the see gradient why. truth isn't interesting. You'll see why, because oh, seven, yeah. <laughs> seven is different, and you'll see why that, that statement is. Tune into our other podcast where we talk about philosophy to talk about gradient truths. <laughs> yeah. We don't have this podcast. It doesn't exist oh. online. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Um, but let's start reviewing this pop, this movie, because that's what this show is all about. And yeah, uh, today we open with a double quote, because the past couple movies we've been opening with quotes, and we start with a... Uh, true. Yeah, every movie. A quote from Frederick Nietzsche. Yeah. You got a, you got a classic, very, like, you know, well, a very well-known person, with really good quote, I guess. I don't know, it was a quote. I don't remember what it was. I didn't write it down. But talking then, about dreams. Yeah, then we cut from that to another quote that says, Welcome to prime time. I can't, I'm not going to say it yet. I would sometimes quote it, but we're too early in the podcast, so I can't do it. Yeah, way too soon in the video. Yeah. You, yeah. Susan will get mad. Can't do it. Um, mm. So, yeah. But it's Welcome to Prime Time, Freddy Krueger. And you know what? I, I'll i be honest. We started on a kind of good note. That I, I liked. Yes. <laughs> I liked. I, th- I thought these quotes to open these have been just like, I don't care. You're just giving me extra reading that I don't care about. I know it's supposed to set like a tone but I feel like this did try to set the tone. This is yeah, not, no, it definitely set the tone. This, this is going to be a goofy series. movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, for, then right after that, we get another setting the setting scene where uh, we get a little like tech. Like it looks like a what's the word I'm looking for? Like a looks like something you see out of like a like a like a military movie with like. Like a end of the world movie, maybe like where we have uh, we have a map of the United States and some text to go over it, telling us that we are ten years in the future. Oh, like, yeah, it's I, so sci-fi, like Mission yeah. Impossible or something. Yeah. yeah, and we find out that in ten years in the Definitely future, felt like a Terminator um, movie. Yeah, ten years in the future now in Springwood, Ohio, specifically, there are no more children, and all the adults have gone crazy. But wait, there is one teenager There's left. Evidence that one teenager is left, um, which. That's just a can of worms that we don't really have time to go into. Just how that would happen that no chill. It just. That's a really weird place to. Immediately we're starting off this movie with. Wait, what? Wait, what? What's happening? There's no. no, Dude. No no children and no. Okay. Sure, yeah. Well, like. Throughout these movies, we've talked before about how, like. As opposed to other horror movie monsters, especially in the teen scream variety, Freddy's. Like, the effects of Freddy's killings don't suddenly, like mask themselves back to normal as soon as the adults enter the room it's like always evident oh this is like some freaky supernatural stuff going on Mm -hmm. and now that they're just blown up on this massive scale which is it it becomes weird later on in the movie when like people that are pretty near to the town like our other main characters just don't know about it it's a surprise to them that's kind of a failing on the media's part i think in this world that like i agree it is a failing on the media that is this movie's part yes <laughs> is that like... not what you meant oh oops oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah now we're on a plane um and we're with this yeah. last teen who for a while goes completely unnamed he technically we never know his name we will eventually uh, come to know like him assigned as... a name yeah we, yeah we come to know him as john doe which Typically only goes to, like, dead people. But, hey, he's John Doe. Yeah, <laughs> but for now, he for the first part of my notes, I don't... I'll try to remember to rename him John, because that's what he goes by through, for throughout the rest of the movie. But we have this teen, and he's on, he's on the plane, and there's this little girl who's in front of him who warns him about how he can't escape. 
Um, then he uh, gets... You know, he's freaking out because he's afraid of heights, and the girl next... He's here, shattering up there. Yeah, the, the the lady next to him is very rude to him. She is very mean to him. She calls him a mean name. Don't be a baby. Yeah. Except she doesn't say baby. She calls him a little <laughs> pussycat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she is... Uh, Syl- Sylvester? Is that the cat? Is that the one that Tweety calls... Forget it. Don't worry about uh, it. Putty tat. Yeah. yeah, I think it's Sylvester, right? Yeah, she's a putty tat. Yeah. Oh, she calls him a putty tat, yeah, she and then is Tweety shortly bird. after, gets sucked through the ceiling of the plane. Yeah, the plane starts falling apart. She goes flying out, and he goes falling from the bottom. Uh, and he falls, and he falls, and oh, he fell into a bed. So we're all good now. He was just a dream. He's awake yeah. now. Oh wait. Or is, is he? he? No, he's not. Because what's that music playing? That's right. It's the iconic soundtrack. From Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which will be playing throughout almost the entirety of the movie. There is only... Uh, it's literally two scenes. Settle down. <laughs> it, do you They do bring lot. it back for one other scene. Um, I guess while we're here, we'll talk about a little fun conversation me and Isaiah discovered about the soundtrack of this movie. Um, Dude, I got so excited. Yeah. yeah the soundtrack is um, by a man by the name of Brian May, who happens to share a name with a famous member of Queen, but is not that, Brian May. This is just a, this is an Australian film composer who has done some, like, bigger work. Like, he's been, he was, he did the soundtrack for Mad Max 1 and 2. Oh. So, like, I mean, I'm not saying those are, like, I don't know if the soundtrack was, like, praised in those movies, but... No, probably not. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't... To be fair, there are lots of flaws in this movie. I really don't think the soundtrack was one of them. I don't think the soundtrack was good either, but I don't think it was bad. Also, like, <laughs> there was a lot mm-hmm. of flaws. I don't know if the, sa- the soundtrack was just there. Uh, the Brian only May moments, is just right in the pocket. Yeah, the yeah. only moments I remember was when they played the Wizard of Oz theme. <laughs> so I guess maybe take that for what it is. Um, but yeah, the Wizard of Oz theme is playing in. What's that? The house is freaking out because oh he's in a tornado and outside the window he sees what's that it's the wicked witch no no it's freddy on a broom doing his wicked witch impression um and he he drops and he um tells him that he's you know gonna i'm gonna gonna get you pretty and your little soul too get it it's a play off of the famous line from the Mm, other better movie (sighs) yeah and then he's like Drops his house on Elm Street. And what's that? That's right. Your favorite thing is back. The Elm Street house has returned. Woo! I'm just I'm so excited because, as we all know, the Elm Street house is the only reason I keep coming back to this series. That's why we're here, right? That's why it's become a central theme in every movie. Okay. It is yeah. weird that, like, this is the first time that we see where Freddy got killed. Which you'd think would be like, that's going to be, if the story's going to have a central location, it'd be that. Oh, yeah. Because you picked the house kind of arbitrary. But, like, we don't see it until the the final chapter. But here's and it's the pretty thing. Brief. He killed, but Nancy, the first one is a classic. So we have to reference that movie in every other movie to remind you this that franchise. Because let's be honest, Freddy is not the same Freddy from that movie. So you have to oh you have to put the house Dude. there so you know that it's the same franchise. That's actually the only actual connecting fiber throughout these movies is this stupid yes. house. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we're back at the house and um and uh, John he runs away like I would. If I saw that house, because I hate this house, I'm tired of this house. Um, and but then he falls down a hill for a while as the rest of the credits play over him. Yeah, yeah, yeah he really does fall down a hill for quite yeah. quite some time. Like, it's a the credits very have large been going hill. over everything we've talked about so far, but they keep going and going over. This. It's like it's like they wrote very like big team. Yeah, they're like, hey, we're gonna put a scene under all of the credits this time. And then yeah. they stopped with the writing, and they're like, okay, cool, we're done, right? They're like, no, we got another two minutes of credits. And they're like, uh, better have a guy who falls down the for the next two minutes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and he rolls down, and what's that? It's a bus stop. And who's that working at the bus stop? 
That's right. It is the producer Bob Shea. He's back. He was a leather daddy. He was a teacher, and now he's working at the bus. And I you know what? I feel like that's the appropriate trajectory of him. Uh, <laughs> it was really mapped out, yeah. Yeah. From the start. But yeah, he's back. It's just a cameo. It's it's not not a cameo that anyone even cares about. People don't go, oh my gosh, Bob Shea. When you watch these movies back to back, you go, oh, that's Bob Shea again. <laughs> yeah. Um, and after he gets his bus ticket and gets a little warning from Bob Shea, he walks into the street and gets hit by the bus. And who's that driving the bus? It's Freddy. Cause it's not Bob Shea again? No, oh. it's, it's Freddy right, driving no. a bus again. Because right. the first of many times in this movie, we're just going to copy things from the more entertaining movies. Remember That's when right. he drove the bus in 2? Yeah. And now well, he's Dude. driving the bus in 6. Uh, so he's driving the bus again? Yeah. But this time he's got like, a cool bus. little bus driver outfit. Uh, <laughs> Freddy, yeah. uh, then after Freddy makes some sort of quip, I don't remember what it was. I think it's like, don't scream while the bus is in motion or something stupid. Mm. He uh, hits the brakes right before they leave Springwood, and John goes flying out of the dream world into the real world, and he bumps his head, and that's actually where he gets his amnesia, which is why we never know his name for the whole movie. Um, mm. But yeah, and this is also because... where. Yeah, Find like, out is he is he going to be our main character? The answer is kind of, kind of uh, for until no, he isn't. Quite, until yeah. he isn't. <laughs> yes, right up until no. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so you think he's really important, and he kind of is, I guess, for the sake of this movie, um, as a vehicle. Yeah, yeah. he is literally yeah. which yeah a plot device. Yeah, he is literally just a plot device, and uh, yeah, Fred, we also at this point find out that Freddy can't follow him though because. You remember that part of the lore, right? That Freddy could never leave Springwood. Oh, wait, no. This movie made up that lore for the sake of having a plot for this movie. Mm. Which, yeah. Also... Nothing new to the Nightmare franchise. Well, no, there is. There's a lot of new to the Nightmare franchise in this movie. Just No, no. I'm just saying the concept of, you know, introducing a thing because we need something to drive the plot forward. No, that's fair. That is fair. That didn't exist previously. I, I did also see someone point out how flawed this specific moment and storyline is for, like, the whole franchise. Mm. It really breaks Freddy. So you could just walk right outside of town and take a nap and had been fine and lived in town no problem. And they want to like, sleep in their own beds, Austin. I mean, or random dusty beds they find in a, an abandoned house. Is also a place not because then as soon as you approach the town limit, he puts you to sleep and then you would die. But he can't put you to sleep if you've been sleeping. That's the thing. See, in the lore they've built, it's people who try to stay awake until they can. It doesn't really matter. This movie sucks and it's gonna suck. I will. I have a shocking statement for my you know ending part that we'll get to at the end. But mm. well, doesn't, well, teasing, teasing. Stick to the end for a shocking number five will surprise you. Um, no, uh, no, I already know what the surprise there's is. There's no countdown. But, um, yeah. but where were we? He gets knocked That's out. That's surprise. He hits his head. Freddy, t- oh, by the way, when he gets knocked out through into the other world, we get a very, like, comical, comical cartoonish like, wall. Yeah. Thir- <laughs> <laughs> I've heard people describe this as the Looney Tunes nightmare. And this it does is. feel like the, the Looney Tunes nightmare of because they use Looney. Yeah. cartoon sound effects. And a lot like of people cartoon sound really effects. hate the Looney Tunes parts of this movie. And honestly, I don't even mind them for most of them. There's a couple that get a little too far, but I actually kind of think there's some of the slightly better parts of the movie. Which maybe shows you how bad this movie is. But <laughs> I think that is exactly the maybe. perfect testament for how bad this movie is. Um... Uh-huh. You know, I really like this the stupid Looney Tune effects that they put in. Well, I'm I'm more so- talking about like the way Freddy acts, kind of like a Looney Tunes character in a way. I don't mind that. I don't have mm. Freddy on this pedestal that he can't do that. Maybe because I've come into Freddy knowing that he became this, so I always knew not to treat mm. him with you know like respect. Yeah, respect. And a modicum of respect. Yeah. <laughs> um, sure. But yeah, uh, <laughs> there it is. That's that's that. Um, so we'll move on. Let me try to find out where we were. Now we cut to. Now I found it. Uh, mm. Wait. No. Oh, sorry. You're taking it back. Ladies. Freddy can't, can't leave. It. And we also. I just have this thing that's written here. I think around this point we find. John finds this little news clipping on him 
that says that there is a Kruger woman still missing. Yeah. Um. And then we go to we cut to the the like the central place of this movie, which is the setting is um, what's the word I'm blanking on? Like a. What's the, the children's home? Yeah, the youth what, home. What's the, what's the, there's a word I'm looking for. We'll go with youth home. That's not what I was thinking. Orphanage. It's not an orphanage though, because foster home. <sighs> what do you put? Like, where do homeless people go? A shelter. It's a shelter. They, there's like a sign that says shelter. It's a shelter. That's the word I was looking for. It is a shelter. Because mm-hmm. um, they're not all homeless. Graffiti Because there's some kids who, like youth. our first kid we meet here, his dad is reprimanding him, telling him, "Hey, if you don't get your act together, I'm gonna leave you here forever." Mm. Because we have, and this is where we meet the character Spencer, who um, he plays video games while his dad's yelling at him, and you know he doesn't want to do sports like his dad. That's yep. that's the character. Um, yep. He also has a pipe bomb at some point, randomly, and feels really out of place for his character, just because it's just like, wait, what? But because yeah. that's like a straight up felony. <laughs> yeah. He's and just it's a like young oh. terrorist. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, you know, I mean, accidentally creating some yeah. explosives. It happens. Yeah. Um, then we meet Maggie, who, spoiler, becomes our actual protagonist later. She's kind of a, like, 1A, 1B for the first half of this movie, and then they kill, you know, the other half. So she became, she just kind of becomes the main protagonist. And I guess, technically, with the convoluted story they come up with, she's always supposed to be the important one. But she, yeah, whatever. I don't need. Oh yeah, she works there. She works at this shelter. She's really nice. She really cares about the kids. Unlike you know her boss, who doesn't seem to care that much. And she's a very caring, good person. Think like you know Nancy in the third movie. Once again, another movie that did something that they're doing in this movie better. Ah, that seems like a stretch on that one. I'll grant it for some other stuff, but like, oh, a a kind character. I mean, I mean, fair. I mean, I would have leaned towards more that like this group of kids that they're bringing together that all have their unique mm-hmm. issues. No, no, they're all the it's the dream being war- more imitations. They're of the dream the third warriors movie. again, and she's yeah. she's still she's filling the role of Nancy. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, actually, that's, yeah, that's she's pretty, Nancy. Yeah, she's Nancy she's pretty pretty dream warriors. warriors. Sorry, I guess when I said Nancy. Point. I didn't specify from Dream Warriors, Nancy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then we um have a random we have another character run in, and that's Tracy. And she doesn't like to be touched, and she's yelling about it. And find out later in one of the He's darkest really good scenes in the franchise fighting. why oh, she doesn't yeah. like being touched. We'll get to that yeah. later in a huge, out of place, out of tone moment in this Looney Tunes movie, as we've described it. And it feels like Looney Tunes for most of this. We'll get yeah. to that until uh, right up until yeah. I guess trigger warning for that point, like. We'll give a trigger warning before we actually go into it, but yeah, it's it's a rough movie. This movie is is rough in so many ways, and not and it's just not good. Yeah. But where were we? Uh, then we also then we meet more. We're at that point in the movie where we're just meeting characters, which is fair. Every movie has to do it. I get it. But um, now we meet Carlos, who is because now we're. Wait, sorry. Def. Sorry, nope. Before we get there, before we get to him, we do oh. have a random scene where the cops find. John Doe on the street and decide to take him to the shelter. Then we cut to Carlos who is like helping Tracy box and Carlos is deaf and that is basically his one character trait. Mm. He's he's a nice he's like one of the nicest characters and there's a lot of these characters are like flawed and mean at times. He's genuinely pretty nice throughout which is like hey positive he's a cool character but he doesn't really get a chance. No, we know what'll happen to him. Yeah, we don't. He doesn't really get a chance to be anything more than just the deaf guy. Um. So then we have a scene where we find out that Spencer, Carlos, and Tracy are planning to escape. They're trying to go to to leave the shelter and head to California. I mean, this scene doesn't. I mean, this scene is just to explain why they're at a different scene. It doesn't actually matter to the story, really. But hey, they're trying to go to California. Now we cut to the doc, who is only ever referred Yafet to... Yafet Kato. Yeah, he's... Hmm? Yafet Kato. Is that the actor? Yeah. Oh, huh? cool. I didn't recognize This is him. like his, his worst movie he's been in. I mean, oh. I feel like this is the worst movie... He was in a lot of good movies. Pretty much anyone who was in was in. 
Him and Alice Cooper are like the big people in this movie. I mean, has Alice Cooper really been in any good movies? Uh, Wayne's World 2, oh, a masterpiece? Does, I, yeah, I do <laughs> love Wayne's I actually do love Wayne's World 2. But I still stand Wait, by my Alice statement. Cooper was in Alice Cooper, yeah, we'll, I didn't even notice him until after, but yeah, he is in the movie. We'll talk about him when we get to him. Um, wow. It's, it's a teaser Alice Cooper's in this movie. Still don't go watch <laughs> it. It's not worth watching. Don't do it. Save yourself. Definitely uh, not Alice Cooper. <laughs> But yeah, we meet the Doc, who is only ever referred to as Doc. I guess that's his name, or it's short for Doctor. But normally characters, mm. at least like someone would have like called him by like Doctor so-and-so at once in the movie. Oh. No, no, his name is Doc. Mm -hmm. Doc, that's Doc. And uh, him and Maggie are having a conversation about dream therapy and a little bit of some exposition about some dream stuff. He mentions dream demons and how they are these ancient Those demons that, you know choose one really evil person to turn nightmares into reality because that's what we wanted right more lore more convoluted lore you like the amanda kruger stuff right no no oh some of you did well you're weird but none of you probably Don't like this worry because there's even more convoluted lore in this yeah. movie pretty cool once again some lore that almost feels like it's trying to humanize freddy which is not what i think anyone wants not what anyone asked for nope but it is what you're going to get. Uh, now we have John, and we find out he has amnesia. This is where we officially find that out, when he talks to... I think he's talking to Maggie in the scene. Uh, but he, the, one of the only things he knows is he's one of the last survivors, and he can't go to sleep. Um, he, tells, he specifically tells her that he falls asleep. Wait, he's not going to wake up. So, he... And I will, real quick, right here, as we mentioned that part, I will say... The one one of the positives of this movie is we don't I guess we do. I was gonna uh -oh. say we don't blatantly get a character telling us Freddy's backstory, but I guess we do have the whole like his memory scene, which basically just does that. So I take back the thing I was about to give it credit for, because they basically just do that in a different medium. Which I guess at least they did it in a different medium. It's not a character just giving exposition on Freddy's lore. But now we have John, who he wants to stop singing. He, he won't stop singing in bed because he doesn't want to fall asleep. But, you know, he can't. You know, he, he eventually does fall asleep. But before we find out that he falls asleep, we cut to uh, Maggie, who has a little, the picture of late, you know, the, the miss. We find out later is the Mrs. Kruger, um, mm. who's a little ghost that, you know, comes out and says, I won't tell. And then from that from that little news clipping, and then we go to a childhood flashback, where we don't see this dad see this dad here, but you know he's running around playing with his kid, little girl. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It gets it gets convoluted. Don't worry. Um, and then John, he has first some water dripping on him, but then he fell asleep, and now it's blood dripping on him, and he's in. Uh, the ghost Elm Street house. But gosh, it's not ghost. I was trying to read what I read. He wrote here. I wrote he's in the gosh darn Elm Street house because I was angry. Nah, the ghost, the ghost darn Elm Street. Yes, things I didn't even know why I would have wrote gosh. So uh, my brain went. Ah, uh, must I must have meant ghost. <laughs> I must have forgot the H in ghost. But no, it is gosh darn Elm Street house. Uh, and that little girl from the you know flashback is here. But then we cut out of this dream for a second to find out in real life he's actually sleepwalking um, up some non-existent stairs. That was, you know, a scene. The key outside. And we're not sure, like, is the... There's somebody else in the room. Can he see it? I think is, the security is, guard watches him, like, walk up the non-existent stairs, I think. He, he yeah, takes it in really stride. cool it's, green screen that they use. Yeah, it's some... At the feet time, on, cutting it. edge green screen, I'm sure. It looks pretty good. Yeah. I, like his feet aren't blurred or anything. Well, uh, I guess. I guess. I immediately went, oh, that looks stupid. But I guess to be <laughs> fair, it, especially for the, for the time, it does look decent enough. Um, where where were we? Uh, then he goes, sorry, he after he goes up the stairs, he finds himself in a padded room with... Who's that? Who's this crazy man in the corner? Oh, it's him, and he's yelling at him that he you know he's his memory, 
with I can't, not the first time, because there's been other times in this movie that we re it, but one of the times that really is glaring about how bad most of the actors are in this movie. This, mm-hmm. the way he yells at himself is just, it's weirdly overacted, and he's not the only actor who does a pretty bad job. I would argue most of Tracy's work is pretty subpar. Uh, but, yeah. uh, and also, Carlos is... He's, like, iffy. He's, like, some scenes he does okay, some scenes he doesn't. But that's kind of, at this point, par with, par, par with the course of this franchise post-3. The first three yeah. movies had pretty decent actors. Then then it went downhill. Hey, um, this one does have Johnny Depp in it, it for we, a, Chris, That is a big, scene. big moment that we were going to yeah, get yes. to big in spoiler. the moment. Why are you ruining everything? So I'm here for <laughs> Uh, but then after he gets woken up by, you know, himself yelling at him and it scares him, he runs, he trips back into the guard, knocking him out of a window. But it's okay, it's just a first story window and the guard's okay and yeah. it really never matters. Yeah. It doesn't at I all. I thought like he was going to kill, when but it happened, they definitely like, make a big thing about it. I, when it happened, I was like, oh my gosh, he killed a guard on accident because of this. That's crazy. How is he going to have to now explain gonna that Now he's going to be away? on the run. <laughs> no, no, the guard's fine because it's a one story window. He just kind of goes, hey, what the heck? And that's it. And then we don't even see that guard again. <laughs> Never again, baby. But we're witnesses to the sheer power of what he can do. When he's actually yeah. Tripping? Fall. Tripping backwards? Fall backwards. <laughs> tripping into a guy because he got scared awake? <laughs> An unstable condition. Okay. <laughs> Accidentally knock another man out of a one-story building. Um, now the next morning, John talks to Maggie about his dream. And she kind of has this realization. Especially, it's also through a conversation she has right after with Doc that, you know, her, you know, dream there was connected to his dream somehow because of this little girl. Ooh, what's this mean? And I believe at this point Doc gives her the suggestion to take him back to Springwood to try to jog his memory. So that's what she does. They head back to Springwood. Um, But while they're on the way to Springwood, John sees that little girl on the road because he nodded off, I guess. Which I think they do show, like, a shot of him closing his eyes, so... It's not like he's just hallucinating, and he's, they swerve to miss her, and they spin out, and as they spin out, from the back of the The Dream Warriors! Yeah, no, no, those act, that was a great cast and a great movie. The with, Dream Fighters! Well, not really. It, it, was a, it was a pretty darn good movie with a huge Amanda Kruger-shaped dark spot in it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this movie... Um, is the opposite. It might have like one moment that's good throughout the whole thing, unlike one bad moment, like in Dream Warriors. Um, so now we have Carlos, Spencer, and Tracy, and they're here. They stowed away with them because they were trying to, you know, make it to California. Um, and uh, but they're, you know, too close to Springwood, so I guess these kids will have to just stick around and d- die. Probably die. Yeah. That's probably why they're here, yeah, right? It's to die. We need more characters to die. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be clear, they're sticking around long enough for a phone call, and then the plan is to just set them loose in the van again. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Go back to the shelter of their own volition, hot on the heels of their plan to um, run away forever. Now, once they get to town, um, they, they they hit up the the Springwood Fair, and was oh, that a clown there? What the heck? That's <sighs> there's a, a clown. reference to something no one else here. We'll be watching it unless Whoa. you're subscribed to our new channel, That's Horror right. Boys. Subscribe to Horror Boys. What that what the heck joke was actually a, a callback to a show that came out Friday, our horror bull commentaries for killer clowns from outer space. Cheap plug. Which is a gem <laughs> it is. movie. Um But yeah, that was that cheap plug out of the way. Let's talk about this this Springwood Fair. Um, fruit, food's got bugs on it. Everything seems in disarray. And as John Roseanne points, Barr's here, <laughs> we're not, first John points out that there's no kids. Then mm. yes, Roseanne Barr shows up, and she's. Which Roseanne it took me Barr. a while to realize it was Roseanne Barr. <laughs> and also, her at the time husband uh, Tom Arnold also shows up to play her yeah. in character husband, and that she really wants to adopt these kids, but. Tom remembers what happens, and it's like, hey, we can't do this. Then he'll come. And then we cut, to, after he says that, we cut to a shot of the kids reacting really badly because all their actors suck. Uh, 
Um, and then that's the, the end of the fair scene. It was literally just there for a Roseanne Barr cameo. Woo! Yeah. Well, and to reveal how weird it is that there's no kids in Springfield. I guess. Yeah. I guess that's fair. I guess. We did reveal that to these it. characters. They didn't know that. You're right. We could have done maybe done that at the school scene later that wasn't terrible like this one was. Mm. But, you know, to be fair, I'm sure Roseanne Barr would have done much better acting, but she was on some sleeping pills and she can't control her acting when she's on sleeping pills. Oh. oh. Uh, <laughs> now we have uh, Tracy, Carlos, and Spencer who are, they're in the, they're in the van now, um, alone. Because I guess, yeah, yeah. Like we said the plan was to send them off in the van. Because that'll go but good. When you think about it, they really should have just drove to California. Well, they couldn't, man. Chris. That's the thing. They pr- might have been doing that. But they can't do anything because, hey, remember that thing that 4 did decently? That dream, the dream repeating itself, going in circles scene? What if he yeah. did that again? But worse. But not as good. Mm. The van turns, <sighs> yep. and then it reappears in the same yeah, street go, and then it turns across, again they and the they do that a few square, times but unlike the other the characters day. who realize they were in like a dream time loop these characters just always think i don't know i guess you just don't know i guess you're just stupid oh, man you just suck at driving <laughs> uh, Do you want to see the map no no, no, no. Well, we're not the whole the map scene will come the map scene yeah. the map scene happens we're not there yet first we have to cut to yeah. john and maggie who find the a chalk freddy with our first appearance of this the poem the little sing songy poem we don't have the kids singing in this movie but we do have it in chalk here and then in some graffiti in a couple other places the last of which is so much later in the movie that i completely forgot they were doing this bit yeah <laughs> you're like oh hey they completed it i, I forgot that that was a I'll, thing that I'll they started yeah. when they complete it because it, it it catches me so i'm like oh yeah that's a thing that this movie was doing for like two scenes yeah <laughs> Then we Pretty see cool. the van drive in circles some more, a few more times, and then we have Carlos who's going through the map, but it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it says a naughty word on it. It says that they're, let's say screwed, but it doesn't say screwed, if you know, if you catch my drift. Wow. Um, and then Tracy asks him, you know, what, what's, a, what's the deal with the map? I've been asking you, and he's like, the map says we're screwed. Once again, he doesn't say screwed, because this is a naughty movie. Um, and now we cut back, we have Tracy and Spencer, no, we don't cut back, sorry, I was wrong. We have Tracy and Spencer decide to switch drivers because, you know, Tracy, she's a woman driver, that's why this issue's happening. But wait, no, it is, Spencer still is also not able to do anything. And now we cut back. And now back. it's nighttime. Yeah, it's nighttime. And now we cut back to Maggie and John, which I think is, isn't in the nighttime, or we skipped over a moment on accident, and that's fine. But Maggie and John, they go to the school to find a teacher teaching no one. Also, this is what we have. The walking into the building, we see another, like, the first one was one, two. This now, on the on the wall, walking in, there's three, four. When the teacher pulls down a... Cho- map. Not, yeah, like a little map. Like, not a map, I don't know. He pulls down, like, the map thing, but it has, like, words on it. Like, it's... Yeah. Yeah. And on there, it has the, you know, five, six... And then we I don't and it probably was there, but I never saw when seven eight show up. I the the big reveal is the next time I remember seeing this is when that way later we see nine ten. I assume mm. that this movie did do the seven eight at some point, but I don't know when it happened. Um, but I will say this scene is weird because there's this timeline. That's what he pulled down specifically. Yeah, he pulled down the teacher pulls down this timeline, and like there's some weird details on it that like might imply that like the the bomb the bo- the bombings America did in Japan was trying to kill Freddy. Like it's yeah, weird. It and uh-huh. like he sailed on the Yeah Ninin yeah. the Pinta. Yeah. Like to yeah. Mar- anyway, but yeah. Well he was because like... they had to make a rhyme. It wasn't 1492. It was a different boat apparently. It was a boat oh, one year yeah. later. <laughs> Yeah, Which is I also all like, impossible considering like the timeline that we find out about later. Maybe this is different dream demon version of him? I don't know. But maybe well, it was we a do different specific, dream avatar. Yeah, that maybe was different chosen. dream demon controlled people are the reason. Or these were just random timeline things that happened to also be on a timeline that included him, you know, being born in like 
that he his, Freddy's kid was taken away from him in 1966. I think or, that's the one that we're supposed to take is like the one that matters, and the rest is yeah, loopy yeah. Freddy propaganda. It probably. Yeah. I do just want to point out that there is definitely a possible way to interpret this that he is the cause of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Hiroshima. <laughs> just saying, there is a chance that that maybe is a subtext you were supposed to take from this scene. Just saying. I feel like it's you know something that needs to be pointed out that it's all Freddy's fault. Um, okay. That solves kind of a naughty... Yeah. Moral debate. Yeah. It's not America's fault. It's Freddy's fault. Thanks. Uh, Moving uh, right along. Now, back to Tracy, and she is tired of uh, Spencer's bad driving, and she leaves Spencer, goes to leave Spencer and Carlos, but they're like, nah, we're not going to let you leave us. So they follow her. And they follow her into this, they follow her to Elm Street. And they walk into a house that's not the Elm Street house. That's yeah. right. We're not doing the Elm Street house. Why is the door bleeding? Why that's is the facade you. blowing it up? Is. Oh it my is god, we're house. back at the Elm Street house. The yeah. movie got me here. I'll be honest. I kind of was like, all right, movie. Because I, like, I hate the Elm Street You're house. Cool. So when they made me think we weren't going to the Elm Street house, I was like, oh, okay, cool. So then when they swerved me and put me right back in the Elm Street house, I was like... Right on, you movie. You got me. You made me think, <laughs> yeah. but no, I'm still stuck at this Elm Street house. All right, fair. It's such a passionate yeah. hatred. I, don't, the I, just, I just, I just, I just, it's not even so much I hate. It does. It comes across a hatred because it. Uh, I'm trying to be comical and complain about it, but realistically, my actual thought is I just don't understand this love for this house that was just happened to be the setting in the first two movies. Dude, yeah, it, it feels like an obsession. Yeah, it's never it's, once explained. It's, it's a little annoying. But I do play it up for the comedy, because this is actually a comedy mm. podcast and review. I know, it's crazy. No, nah, he actually hates it. Do, I do hate it with a passion. It is literally the bane of my existence. Um, yeah, very inconvenient. Um, and Carlos, now that he's in this godforsaken house, he finds this really dusty bed and just goes, ah, I guess I'll sleep on it. Mm. Which I feel like was a weird street. choice. I feel like if I saw a bed that dirty, I'd go... Maybe I stay awake. <laughs> Maybe I at least yeah. try to stay awake until he I explains. Happen. It's better than the streets. But like, you know, what's also better than the streets? Not sleeping that night. It's one night. <laughs> he slept last night and wasn't being affected. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> he has no reason to need to sleep right now, other than well, none of these characters are from yeah. Sleepy Town, Ohio. Yeah. None so. of these kids have been affected by Freddy. They've all been sleeping. Maybe some of them had oh, a... Oh, they don't know that they shouldn't yeah. be sleeping. The boys had a slightly rough night last night where, you know, good old John Doe sang for a little bit. But then he passed out too. So really, they had a night's sleep. And I just don't know. I just wouldn't sleep on the disgusting, filthy bed. That's me. Um, and then the we cut back fine. to Tracy and Spencer, who they're, they, they're looking around a little bit more. But then we cut back to Carlos, who's fallen fully asleep. And he wakes up in a dream, and now he's not really in the house, but he kind of is. He kind of walks. It's like that. It's that I, one thing I will say this series has always done really well is the switching from one scene to the next scene in a dream really well in a way that feels so real to dreams. That is such a like phenomenon I have felt in so many of my dreams where I, I'm like I'm walking through this one scene, and then I'll be, then I like then there's that moment in my dream where I go, Wait, how did I? What am I doing here? All right, let's just roll with it because it's a dream. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, yeah. but there is that like question. half second, even in your like dream state, where you go, "This feels weird," but you just plow through because you're like, "This is what I'm supposed to be doing. It's a dream." So he is now in a like apartment complex, like like, a, like a, you know like your run, kind of rundown apartment, and um, his mom's here, and uh, she's you know telling it him. He's apparently she's like, "I was yelling for you. You didn't hear me. I need to clean out your ears." And he says, don't make me deaf, which is the implication that she, yeah. like, she made him out of deaf ears. in the first place? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, she stuck the, the Q-tips too far in his yeah, ears. and it his caused his probably. deafness? Okay. He implied before there was parental abuse. Okay. I did In the boxing scene, yeah. Okay. I guess that's fair. I guess they earned that. It still feels like a weird tonal choice to go, yeah, his parents are the reason he's deaf. Mm. They jammed a yeah. monstrous Q-tip into it. Yeah. Um, but then, very, very long Q-tips, yeah. yeah. To be fair, I think it might only be that long because of the dream. Um, mm. And it also mm. needed to be that long because now Freddy's got it and he's going to shove that bad boy 
literally <laughs> through his brain. <laughs> yeah. In one out ear, out the other. Could have been his death scene right here, realistically. Like, his character okay. should be dead. <laughs> uh, Freddy wants to kill him a few more times. Yeah, he so. wants to keep messing with the boy. <laughs> um, yeah. So he asks him to lend him a ear and cuts off his ear, which also takes away his hearing aid. So now, we'll I'll say, they do a, I'll say shaky job at it, but I do really want to give the movie some credit for trying to do this cool distorted hearing effect for us the viewers like we're getting it from his point of view like there's a lot there's you pretty much only hear like him breathing and his like heartbeat for most mm -hmm. of this like next scene we're about to have which like i thought it it really was actually kind of immersive for a moment that's it that's that's that maybe that's the, this is remember I'm earlier i teased that there might have been one good moment in the movie we'll call it this part because I, I, I think this little part of the scene works. But I also will say, the surrounding part that caused it, and, like, the more of it, this feels like one of the, like... It's not, because there's, like, the drug addict from Dream Wars. But this feels so... For some reason, this scene just feels so much more mean-spirited than any of his other kills. Maybe it's because he's picking on the disabled kid. And yeah, he's killing harassing him with a his dis disabled kid before he kills him. But, like, this just... This whole picking on the deaf kid being deaf feels so much more mean-spirited i don't know maybe that's just me but just there's something about this scene and maybe i because like i look think back and like joey was made fun of for you know not being able to talk but for some reason that never felt did not feel this mean-spirited i don't know what it is but something about this just felt like just felt mean and i get it he's freddy and he's he does, allowed to be mean. he draws it out for quite some time maybe i was fixing to say it's, it's so it's mean long. to the viewer because um, it's like eight minutes long <laughs> yeah it really is um You're like oh surely brain skewer is gonna be it nope oh and then he cuts off his ear oh wait there's more yeah because now we get oh, the there's... chalkboard yeah. the chalkboard, well, we the chalkboard. Yeah, we have oh to... before the chalkboard yeah, we have... he drops well, pins. well before that as well you guys are jumping past another well done scene after and he... then there's a drop of water well, before that even... first oh. he chase as he's chasing him through the building for a while we get a lot of shots of freddy like jumping around behind him and screaming while we can't you can see it from his point of view not hearing it and like once again True. i this scene is one of the few like scenes i'd actually call funny i actually think this was well done in a movie surrounded by a lot of stuff i didn't like i and also i don't even fully like this because it does feel so mean i did like the execution at least of this mean scene <laughs> of this mean uh, but yeah, then we have the water drip that is like a really loud to him. Wait, no, not yet. First, he drop after he after he stumbles in, he drops him a yeah, new hearing he drops aid. Drops his hearing aid, and that new hearing aid like becomes a spider thing, I guess, and it makes him have super hearing now. And yeah, the he, water drop. It's a hearing aid creature yeah. <laughs> embedded in his skull. And the water drop is excruciating, so he turns off the water. Freddy goes to drop a needle, and. He catches it. He catches it. And there's, I will say, there's like so much anticipation from that first needle dropping where you go, oh my gosh, if this needle drops, how hard, how like hard will it hurt him? And then he drops like 50 needles and the sound design wasn't nearly as well done as even like the water drop <laughs> feeling big. Like it's like, wait, that's yes. it? Yes. Well, okay. Well, there's there's also we both thought the same thing. The there. preceding whistling through the air needle dropping. Yeah. Thing. It is also implied that Carlos hears. That. Yeah, but just if, yeah, it felt like it was gonna be so much bigger. This these needles dropping, and then it was just kind of like, oh, okay, that's it. Ah, uh, like, that was really dumb, unpleasant. Dumb. Yeah, that was yeah unpleasant for him. And then Freddy, he pulls out one of the maybe the worst things that anyone has, and this is probably my genuine, you know, big, one of my biggest fears. And I'm just kidding, no, but he pulls out a chalkboard, and I think if you if you know about how chalkboards work. And you know, you know, nails on a chalkboard, and you think of Freddy as a character, a guy with knife nails, basically. Like, you're about to get a scene that I'm honestly surprised it took this long. Because it is, it feels yeah. so right to have him torturing, I mean, it, once again, it sucks that he's torturing a poor deaf kid by making him superhear it. Because it could have just been yeah. <laughs> eerie enough by just him doing it, because it wasn't that much louder for us at this point, but it felt in excruciating because that sound is excruciating <laughs> dude but yeah yeah so he, he well first he actually he in a very once again looney tunes-esque fashion he makes he gets pulled out a really small chalkboard and then stretches and then it stretches bigger and it bigger out. and once again 
I understand people really don't like this take on Freddy. And I, I do get it. I do. I don't mind this part of Freddy. Like, it's, for me, it's all the lore and backstory and crappy characters and all that that make this movie suck. I actually like the, like, three or four times he gets really in tunes with it. I'm fine with that. I think it's silly and stupid, sure. But I'm, I, I kind of like him making the chalkboard really big. And then he excruciatingly does his nails on it or like he's real crazy with it. I think he kind of starts humping the chalkboard. Uh, and then his head explodes, not Freddy's. Uh, Carlos's head explodes from the excruciating pain. And in a, once again, a weird decision where they just went, eh, what if we just make up completely new rules that don't make sense with any of the other movies? Carlos's body has disappeared. And, it's the first of multiple characters who just, when they die, they're gone. And we find out in a throwaway line later, it's because Freddy is erasing them through the power of dreams or some literal bullcrap excuse they make up later. But it's just like, wait, what? Okay. From the stream of, of time itself. Yeah. Like, like he had never existed. Yeah. yeah. Unless you were... At the house with him. They're the only characters who remember him. And later we find out Doc. Because of reasons. Because he can control his dreams. Because of reasons. Like I said. Yes. Until he cannot. <laughs> this movie. This movie, man. Uh -huh. Carlos has disappeared. And then we go to Spencer. We got Spencer who's on the couch. And he's getting high. And you know. Oh. Okay. Uh, we will wait. Here I am. Okay. All right. All right, we'll keep going then, and we we'll just won't cut that, because I don't care. Uh, <laughs> uh, we cut to Spencer, who's, he's getting that fun, that fun, you know, that fun high. You know that, you know that high everyone gets from weed, where they somehow now hallucinate televisions showing things on them while they're still awake? Like, he hasn't fallen asleep no. yet, but the weed, no, the oh. weed gives him such powerful hallucinations that he thinks the TV is going on. I'm just saying that's not how this broken TV, by the way. Like it's, but whatever, you know. That's basically mm -hmm. that's yeah. how it's clearly it's, Bob Shea never been high. Well, before. to be fair, like we mentioned in a past episode, Bob Shea, his big you know history with weed was, you know, distributing reefer madness, which this does kind of fall in line with that. And I also mm -hmm. want to uh, make a correction from that episode, whichever one it was, we mentioned him doing that. We all, well, I said it, but you all, none of you caught it. I said that he used to, you know give out DVDs of Reefer Madness, which he did not, because the timeline is it not at all possible for him to have DVDs. My bad. <laughs> I am a child of the DVD era, and he definitely gave out VHSs because DVDs did not exist until after all of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. So, <laughs> my bad on that. There's my correction. Stop bringing it up, Dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Where was I? Uh, but yeah, so Spencer gets super high, and in the TV, he sees Carlos, who's telling him, hey, don't go to sleep. But of course, he doesn't, you know, listen to that. Listen. And he starts to fall asleep. And then John and Maggie, uh, they go to the orphanage, because there's an orphanage in town, because, you know, we have to find out the story of this lost kid. Remember that? Remember that story? We haven't talked about it in a little while on this podcast. Remember it? You cared about it, right? No? The one from 1966? Oh, yeah. Oh. Was that before or after he caused the bombings in Japan? Um, but yeah, so now they're at the orphanage and the runner, the orphanage, the lady who ran the orphanage, she's, a, she's just like everyone else in this town. She's crazy. She's talking to kids who don't exist, saying she recognizes all of them, including the kids that don't exist there. So, you know, you can take what she says with a grain of salt, except for when she doesn't, because she does say she recognizes Maggie. <gasps> what? Yeah, that's right. Uh, but Maggie finds a drawing of Kay Kruger. Who could that be? Um, and John thinks it obviously has to be him, because we don't know who he is, and we don't know his backstory, so he must be a Kevin or a Kyle Kruger, obviously. Um, except that this is set, I mean, it was made in what, like, Nine, it's set in the 90s, right? And yes. if the child were stolen in 66... <sighs> That's a solid point. It just, like, it so clearly eliminates... Like, it so clearly narrows it down. I don't... Uh, you know, that's a very 
Solid point I did not think about while watching it, but you are so what? right. It seemed yeah. like you would seize on this immediately, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well... It must obviously not be No him. one realized that, so... <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, it seems yeah. like I'd be the last one to realize, but yeah. all right. The writers didn't realize it. The act, the characters, none of them realize it. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that really breaks this already broken movie even more. Uh, yeah. yeah um, now Tracy shows up and she tells them, "Hey, we got to go find people," and they drive off to the Elm Street house. And we cut to Spencer's dream, and it's open with a oh, once again few times in this movie that I'll give it credit for things that I really like. There's a little anti-drug PSA um, from Johnny Depp, and it's, you know, a parody of, like, an actual anti-drug PSAs that you used to talk about, like, with yeah. the egg, where he crack an egg. This is have, your brain yeah, on drugs. This is your brain before drugs. They crack the egg, and now it's all egg and broken egg in there, and it's like, that's your brain on drugs. Now it's all eggs. You have any questions? And then Freddy nails him with the a frying, pan. frying pan and says that what's he on? Because that looks like eggs in a frying pan to me. Which, you know, I kind of like... It's weird. This movie that knows nothing about drugs due to how his weed acts does kind of, you know, lampoon those slightly comical anti-drug PSAs the way they were done when they weren't supposed to be. They were to supposed to be taken seriously. And this kind of, like, points a finger at how that stu those PSAs were not done well. Um, hmm. I know it's crazy, but... I've met people who smoke weed, and most of them don't melt into couches. I know. I thought that's what would happen after I saw those PSAs, but it's, most. it's actually not. I met, like, one dude, but like, it's not fair to blame all the other... <laughs> oh. It's not fair to all the other yeah, potheads I know. No guy ever melted into the couch. Yeah, no, no one ever has. Uh, oh. Yeah. So now, uh, Freddy, he closes this little scene with asking Spencer to trip out with him, and we get this, once again, far more, like, LSD inspired 70s, yeah. six, late 60s drug trippy scene where, you know, with all like the bright colors that feels very like disco era, like yeah. not tripping on acid, get, not at all weed, but you know, you get that scene no. where, and those, the colors that Freddie's dancing in front of in this almost music video esque scene there, they start spilling out into the world and they pull Spencer Stuck into the TV. In Spencer. Because, they pull, because, because the thing is, Spencer has two character traits. We know he smokes weed, but we don't want to kill him with drugs. So we're going to kill him with no. his other thing, which is video which games. Which is video game. Which is literally shown in one scene that I didn't even notice he was playing video games until I went back and like heard people talk about it. And like this scene here where we find out. I just remember his dad yelling at him. I don't remember him I playing video games. Yeah. He's scene. playing ninja game. Yeah. He was. And like it ninja. was there. But I didn't even notice it the first time because that's how non-consequential it felt to that scene. But it's his character trait is he likes weed and he likes video games. He's a stoner gamer, which yeah. is... I mean, an archetype that just exists I mean, in it modern does. day it, it does. society. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a person. That's <laughs> just a, yeah, a very large group. Yeah, very of people active, there's a lot itself. of those people out there. But, you know, this one is going to, is going to be it's the all death all the Spencers event. out there. Um, going to be the others show up, desserts. and they can't find Spencer, though, because, you know, he's sucked mm. into the TV. And yeah, because once again, another really cool thing that this movie does, yeah. where Freddy just sucks people into the dreamscape completely, mm -hmm. even their physical yeah, their body. Their physical bodies are gone now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. And then when they die, their bodies just are never seen again. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a really cool thing. And they never were. Yeah, yeah, they never. They never even existed, guys. Just sucks them right out of existence together. Um, <laughs> oh, geez. yeah. And now he's he's trapped in this video game, and the, it's a really like crappy side-scrolling beat-em-up style game with these like very cartoony graphics it is um, very and terrible he's like graphics. fighting his stereotypical his his dad who doesn't even look like his dad at all but he's no. just this giant buff blonde guy with a tennis with racket a tennis racket very what's, intimidating what's he keep yelling at him i forget be like me be like, be like me, me. Be yeah. like me. they literally be hit like you on the head me. with the most like on the point oh okay yeah okay cool um and then freddy gives a a spin on a, a nod to the classic Nintendo catchphrase. Now I, he says, now I'm playing with power. The, the whole thing was like, now you're playing with power, which was like the big thing. Like they had Nintendo Power magazine. Like mm. they really obviously the want this. Movie. 
Yeah. He later has a gets, knockout yeah. version of the power glove because they Nintendo True. said no and wouldn't let them Which use the actual sense power glove. I mean, they did the tie-in with the wizard, which is also pretty trash. So honestly, I'm surprised they didn't just license it out here. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Spencer, he eats some fruit and he starts glowing and he becomes Super Spencer. Because, gosh, this movie sucks. Um, I gotta have at least one super character yeah. per movie in the last two movies. And he kills some of his fake, you know, his dad, the dad, versions of his dad in the game a little bit there and... We cut to Freddy saying, "These graphics are great," and you're like, "Are they? Are they Freddy? Are they, yeah. are they Freddy?" I think to differ. <laughs> then we have a random scene where I guess maybe they're starting to be in the dreamscape, or they're just at the house. I don't know. There's the scene where Maggie says, "I'm here," and I just felt really out of place, and I didn't understand it. But she's here. Um, then we cut she's to, somewhere. Yeah, she's here. Then we cut to Johnny, John, Johnny. It's not John, John, and he's in the dining room and. Oh, what's that? Spencer pops out of the wall, and he's in. He's back. See, he wasn't in the video game. I guess he was. Out, wall. So he was in the walls. Because now, for the rest of this scene, because of comedy, which is in quotes, because it's not funny, Spencer is in mm. the rest of the scene, so we can see him acting out what he's doing in the dream in real life. Which, like, it's kind of what they did with you know John's first dream, where he accidentally knocked the guy out of the window. So it's like, if that's the, what they wanted to go with with this new thing is the way Freddy was attacking everyone was with these, like, sleepwalking-style episodes to hurt them more. Okay. But then he also makes their bodies disappear and just disappear into the dreamscape for half of it. And it's like, wait, what? So it just it's it doesn't even follow its own crappy made-up rules they yeah. tried to make for this crappy movie. They, like, change it mid dream sequence for what joke they want to make next <sighs> this is easily like the looniest tuniest part i guess because we've I got mean, the hallway yeah. chase and the i will say i see so what you're weird. saying but i would say there is definitely a scene that is literally right out of looney tunes that will be coming up soon that i would say is slightly more looney tunes could it be when she blows him up with a stick of dynamite that's that's a pipe bomb first oh. off it's a callback oh so yeah <laughs> it's a pipe bomb <laughs> But no, I'll get, I'll get to the scene. It's, it's coming person. up real soon. It's coming up real soon. Oh, okay. Um, now we have... Yeah, we have this scene... Where was I? I lost my place. And that's fine. I just got fine. It sucked out of the wall. Yeah, Pence pops in. And, and now he's, he's still, getting stomped, he's getting on stomped on by Freddy, by Freddy in, the video, in the video game. And after John says he'll go into the dream, Spencer gets up and does this video game walk and starts just bouncing <laughs> up and down. And there's awful sound effects throughout. He also starts yep. punching walls and... Freddy, I will say once again, one of the few times like it's it's it borderlines on like just saying things to say things that Freddy likes to do. But as a video game nerd, I was kind of impressed that Freddy popped out the Konami code here. It's a throwaway little like joke from joke from him, but he does go like left, right, left, right, like up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, in like a cutaway. And I'm like, I'm surprised this movie knew what the Konami code was. All right. What is the Konami code? It's a code that used to be used for a lot of video games, specifically games made by Konami, that like would get you special power-ups. And it's been mm. it's later used in a lot of other games as like a homage to that. It's so, like, it is okay. a... It was a surprising video game reference that I didn't expect this movie to get. And maybe it didn't. Maybe it was just close enough that my brain thought it was. And he was just saying directions, because those are things you could do on a D-pad that he was trying he was making the character do and maybe i'm giving it too much credit i might be but i was like oh is that the konami code that's crazy and that's it like it's it's it is it falls under the thing i hated in the last movie of just power drive like that's saying the konami code at this point would be doing that and i get that i get the hypocrisy there but as a video game konami nerd, code. yeah as the video game nerd i am i was like power oh, glow. konami code okay <laughs> And that's and maybe that's what bike people thought in the last movie. They went, the fuel Power injections steering? are a thing. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'm taking back a little bit of my hate for that part of that last movie. Nintendo <laughs> of America. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he no, gives the Konami sucks, code, and then Spencer continues on. to bounce off the walls with a bunch of sound yeah. effects. 
And Tracy doesn't want to knock out John to send him into the dream world. She says she has a different way to do it. So he starts. He, I don't remember what John says. He says something that just like, makes, just do it. Yeah, he, he said he said something that, like purposely offends her to get her to hit him. I don't remember what it was. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he says like, oh, because her dad killed himself. I think is the story she said or something like that at one point. But then we find later with her dad doesn't quite add up. But she he says something about her dad, and she hits the crap out of him. Um, I think it was her dad. It might have not been. Because that doesn't really make sense with her character later. And I feel like the movie wouldn't be that stupid. I swear he called her, like, weak like her dad. But that doesn't make sense with the story arc we are about to get for her dad. So It's something much more innocent. It yeah. might be. Yeah, so he, it makes her mad, and she knocks him out. And then, and now he's in the dream world, because that's how it works. You just go into the dream world, right? It wasn't a someone's specific power to do that in the other parts of the franchise. Mm. Now everyone can do it. They weren't it, built around that. Including... Night. Tracy, who just meditates her way in. Yeah, she just kind of like floats in. I'm here. And descends. I told you I could yeah. get here. And you're like, yeah, sure, you can. Um, and they go to stop Freddy and they kick out his kick his controller away from him. And he goes, um, but I got the power glove. And he closes the door on them. Yeah. And then, uh, I would like to clarify. I, w I was lost for a second. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't say anything about his, her dad at all. Literally just says lay it, lay it on me or lay me out, and then he slaps her, and so oh, she slaps him with her. A, okay, yeah, he hits him with the wooden okay. plank. Um, but yeah, he and then she like f glitters in, and she's like, yeah. well, I told you there's an easier way." Yeah, she beams down. Um, yeah. so yeah, they kick the controller away from him. He goes, "Well, I forgot about the power glove," which is like a now his glove is Another slightly reference. more power glovey. But they couldn't get the actual power glove like they wanted. Right. Uh, and uh, Spencer is now, like, with the power glove, he's making him, like, teeter on the stairs in real life. Because you remember the old classic Fry uh, Nightmare on Elm Street thing? If you die in the real world, you die in your dreams. He kills him in the real world to kill him in the dream. Because yeah. that's where this movie is at this point. But it's also Except he's kind of still in the Carlos dream because he doesn't die yeah, in he the goes, dream. He falls down the stairs in, into the soul tube. Yeah, into the what we th apparently was not an umbilical, you know, tube like we thought in the last movie, which would have made sense for the theming of that. That's just the portal to hell. My yeah. bad. Oops. Or to Freddy's soul tummy. dimension. Soul, soul stomach. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. Yeah. So now after that. After he kills him there, uh, I'm oh, sorry, no, he starts to make him fall on the stairs. Then we get a cutaway to Freddy talking about, I beat my high score. Which this is that point where we're basically, I will say, at least I guess giving this movie, like, the most fraction and more credit from the last movie is, at yeah. least there was a visual representation of the random video game phrase we're going to throw out for this scene. Unlike the last mm. movie where it was just shots of him turning into a bike and he said bike words. <laughs> Like, this movie, at least they, like, showed a high score when he said he beat his high score. He could have just been, like, high score, like the last movie. And I guess the movie deserves credit for that. They made it slightly better in that sense. Everything else still sucks. This movie's terrible. Uh -huh. mm. um, after that, after he makes him fall down the stairs, and, like, as he's about to fall into uh, hell, there's some blood that comes out of the TV... In, like, a cool shot, I guess, but why? Like, it's literally well, a pointless shot that... Because he got sucked into the TV. But he's not in the TV. He's falling down the stairs. But he was in the TV, Austin. No, it's and stupid. And we've got to make sure to call the attention to that. It's stupid. And then when but he does I will fall into the hill portal, the TV fills complete, up completely with blood. It is completely stupid, but it is at least visually cool looking. Mm. <laughs> Um, but remember, he was in the TV, though. Yeah, then his soul <laughs> flies into Freddy, who's now on, like, a pedestal somewhere. Like, he's up on, like, this, like, riser thing. Um, yeah. And then Tracy does, like, a cool flipping kick, because I guess she got that power. Remember that? She got the cool yeah. kung fu power. She's a dream warrior. She yeah, is, she is a dream warrior. It's a dream remember. warrior. Yeah. Um, yeah, she does a flip. Dream, dream fighter. She does a flip That's on the most the... coveted dream warrior skill. Yeah, it really. is. At being an acrobat. Yeah. Yeah. So after she's up there, Freddy calls her daddy's little girl, which, as we'll find out, is a trigger for her. So she kicks him in the nuts. Um, yeah, and then fair. Maggie wakes her up before, right as he's about to slash her, but they can't wake up John. 
So they try to drive him out of town. But John wakes up in his room and thinks, oh, it's okay. Everything feels like... Well, first he hears the music from Wizard of Oz. And he yep. gets a little worried. But then he walks outside and it's, it's all sunny and nice and it's okay. And he's like, I'm fine. Then he gets pulled out his window. Or no, he gets sent into space. His house gets sent into space. Then he wakes up in his bed and he goes, well, I'm just not going to get out of bed. So Freddy lights his bed on fire. Once again, a mildly comical like scene where like where he goes, I won't get yeah. out of bed then. And then his bed just lights on fire. He's like, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so he runs and jumps out the window. Um, and as he's falling, his shirt turns into a parachute. Um, and Freddy's like spinning around at the top of it before coming down and uh, he starts cutting the parachute and telling him that, you know, he's not his dad and, you know, that he, you know... Well, like, uh, just before that him. happens, we get it, like, it, the, it cuts back to them in the car and John gets sucked out of you the car right. because of the way he's falling from the... You are right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. He gets pulled out of the car, you're right. He just... <laughs> and yeah. then, then the scene I just ha- said it happens where he tells him he's not his dad, yeah. tells him that... Oh, I, it was a girl or something like that and you know how you know i was just using you you weren't special i wasn't i just wasn't ready to kill you yet i needed you to bring me my girl back so then freddy cuts a shoot and now here is the literal most looney tunes thing in this movie as he's falling to his death freddy now is magically on the ground pushing a spike trap to catch him looking at the camera and taking a breath like that is some wily coyote and honestly i kind of love this scene some people i hate this forgot scene, about that yes. and i i can get why they hate it because it is so freddy is just a joke he's not even trying to be scary anymore and i get if you like scary freddy i get why you don't like that scene and i get why you, i get why no one likes this movie but <laughs> but that scene I'm like, oh, that was actually kind of funny. I, I like him looking at the camera and breathing as he gets the spike trap right in the right spot. Like, is it Looney Tunes is crap? Yeah, but I'm kind of okay with that. Like, it's kind of great. Uh, and uh, he falls and he gets the spikes through him. And, oh, wait, what's that? It's happened in real life, too. The blood's coming out of him in real life in the van. What's your wounds? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then after that, um, right before John's body is about to disappear, he... It's not a boy! Yeah, he tells Maggie that the kid's not a boy. Which I guess means the last movie, Dream Child, the classic, it's a boy line was a lie. It was actually... Wait, no, sorry. It's not what it's referencing. Completely unrelated, actually. <laughs> uh, and then Freddy says it's... In, in his most, like, quip delivery voice that he likes, they use sometimes, he gives the most not-joke at all and just statement of fact and he says it's travel time and he like they do like literally like a dissolve on him as he turns into a ghost and goes into maggie's head because that's a power he has when he needs to escape from where he is as long as it's his well, it's a power time. it's a power he has when they need him to have a new power yeah but also i just want to point out like am i missing something What's the joke with the, it's traveling time, which he delivers in his joke voice. Like he, deli- like that, like that, that's the cut to him as he gives this clever quip. Like, like it's not like he goes on the road again or something like that's a joke. He doesn't make a joke. He says the words, it's traveling time. And I just, he doesn't like make a joke about being on, on the Oregon trail. He does a lot of road based jokes he could have made, but he doesn't. He says it's traveling yeah. time. That what? is true. What's the Oregon Trail joke that you've got lined oh, up? Oh, I don't have one really. Okay. He makes some sort of joke about dysentery. It's I don't know. It's it's, oh, it's okay. rough. I'm All not right. there yet. I, I'm not. Here's the thing. I'm not claiming to be a Hollywood writer. The people who made this were. I don't know if they were claiming to be Hollywood writers. They just were. <laughs> Fun. Then I guess this is the point. I'll bring it up here. <laughs> Fun fact. Uh, I guess this is the best time to mention writers. This movie was almost written by Peter Jackson and his co-writing partner from their horror movies they did in Australia. Um, but and he wrote a script for Peter it, Jackson's King Kong. Yeah. The official gave him the movie. Peter Jackson, who yes, wrote 
and wrote King Kong, which has a video game. Also, most famously for Lord of the Rings, I would say. Yeah, um, really? <laughs> but know. Peter Jackson actually wrote a script that was like so much cooler sounding. A little brief touch on it. Um, the idea in general was that his version was that Freddy and now is like very weak and he's at the point where no kids are even afraid of him. And like they literally will like take sleeping pills to go in to mess with Freddy to like bully him basically. And then one day he just accidentally kills one of them again. And that starts causing the fear to ramp up. And that's all like the details that are out like about what the script would have been. But like, that's already a better sounding plot than what we got. Um, but secondary fun fact connected to that fun fact that did introduce Peter Jackson to them to new line to new line who later produced the Lord of the Rings movies. So him try them trying to get him to write this movie ended up leading to Lord of the Rings in a weird broken way. So uh, we can thank this movie for the Lord of the I Rings. I guess what that's what I'm to trying to say is yeah. this movie crapped its pants so that movie could run. Mm. Um in its crappy pants. <laughs> No, that movie's not crappy. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> the metaphor it has to continue. Yeah. yeah. I was, yeah. It was like, it's still old, like, it walked so that could run. But this movie didn't even walk. It just sat down and crapped its pants. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. So, that's the fun Why fact. So um, Peter Jackson almost wrote a, you know, wrote he wrote a script for this movie. And almost, they chose not to go with it, even though it sounds a million times better than what this movie ended up being. Uh-huh. Even in the tiny bit we know, the plot already sounds at least less contrived than there's only one kid left, and oh, also Freddy had a kid, and also it's like okay, cool. In the distant future <laughs> of 1995, yeah, <laughs> Springwood, Ohio has only one teenager um, left. So now, this is the Terminator. As they drive off with you know Freddy and her Tracy and. They get in the car, and Maggie gets in the car after that, and they drive off through some glass-breaking effects to symbol that Freddy has left the bounds of Springwood. Ooh. Ooh. And it looks really bad. I mean, I... It doesn't look good, but for 92... It's slightly it, better than when for John Doe gets flung through the, I, the dream veil. I'll also just say, for 92, this looks great. I, I have to give the movie credit at the time. This doesn't in here's thing. Even in 2022, I don't think it looks terrible. I think it looks kind of crappy, sure, but it's not like awful. I've seen much. We get to the point like the early 2000s where CGI is so much worse than even this crap. This early early CGI here because they like knew their limits here. I guess um, it's not like the 2000s CGI where they thought they were making the most epic stuff ever and it's atrocious if you go back and look at it it's not beast wars okay is really what i'm trying to say uh beast wars the transformers do you the know? best transformer show ever maybe storyline not visually i don't yeah. remember the storyline so i won't judge it on that but that is literally one of the most atrocious things i've ever seen visually but that's not the point of this show <laughs> if you want to hear me talk about beast wars too bad i won't and um that's not a show i'm ever giving you um i'm about to say like are you teasing a beast wars show no yeah yearly beast wars dedicated podcast that's a new beast wars an podcast. entire channel yeah it's a whole channel i just i break down yeah. beast wars episode by episode four hour documentary like podcast per episode um ken beast burns wars. features yes. beast wars. Yeah. um now we're back to the the shelter and Maggie's trying to tell her superior. I think his name is Kelly, but I think we only find out his name in this one scene. He's in literally one scene before this. She's trying to tell him about how John and Carlos, how they Spencer, how they disappeared, and he doesn't even know who she's talking about. These people never existed. What's wrong with her? And then we cut to Tracy having the same conversation basically with Doc. But hey, he remembers them because he, he can control his, his dreams. dreams. So Freddy's oh. erasure of them doesn't work on him because he can control his dreams guys this character who doesn't really ever even get an actual name his name from is doc 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 he's doc, doc. Oh, um, doc so maggie is now at her desk and she's crying because you know she lost people she kind of cared about i guess and um at her desk while she's crying she remembers 
Not in the scene it happens, so I don't know if maybe it's a ghost of him visiting her. Because he tells her that lying down dead, and this is him, like, standing up in a room. Um, and he tells her that it's not a boy message again. And that makes her realize, oh my gosh, it's me. So she, to prove this, I guess, because she doesn't say that out loud, obviously. But she goes to her mom's house, and then we cut to... Cut back to Tracy, who's boxing and has like a little conversation with Doc. It's non It's really not consequential. Um, then Maggie finds out that she was adopted, but her mom she doesn't know who the parents were because you know it was a closed adoption. So that's not how that works. That's how it works. You know, you don't know, and that actually that's accurate. If closed, that is how closed adoptions work. Good for you, movie. You got one thing right. That is how closed adoptions work. <laughs> um. Now Maggie, she walks past the end part of the poem. Whoa! Maybe the the part I missed was there somewhere. I don't know where it was. I didn't care. But I saw this and was like, wait, what? They're still doing that poem bit? <laughs> so, yeah. She sees another part of the poem. Um, then, after that, Maggie has a memory of her mom. Well, it's, the same, it's the same memory from earlier of her like playing with her dad. But then we it continues a little bit and we have her mom screaming coming out of the basement screaming how she she won't tell she won't tell and we don't quite know what it is yet but we kind of we do realize it's freddy so we're like oh crap what did she find in the basement and well little maggie goes to the basement to let us know he finds out his basement like little hideaway with all like different other versions of his glove that he maybe used in mm. his child killing days also a bunch of news clippings about himself because he's a big fan of himself um, about him being the Springwood Strangler, I think is what his serial killer name was as a, a living person. Mm. Um, then we cut to the maybe the most que- most questionable choice this movie made. She walks out of that room, and now in the other part of the basement, not in the secret room, it's grown-up Maggie in the same clothes and pigtails. Yeah. What? And I feel like this might have just been maybe someone who was on, like, the production team having a thing they were into. Because it just didn't make any sense to me. And it just mm-hmm. kind of happens. Um, and then Freddy, Freddy's there, and he tells her that she's Catherine. Um, fun fact, not really at all, but just a fact. Uh, the closed captions say Catherine with a C on HBO Max, which I thought was really funny because the whole thing was how her name is Catherine with a K because of the K Kruger. But the big reveal when he says it, like, if you're deaf, you're just going to read Catherine <laughs> with a C. And you're like, that's not the right name. But hey, yeah. it happens. <laughs> um, and he tells her it was her blood. He, we get like a little expositional stupid dream reasoning for things being able to happen he tells her that it was her blood which can get was able to get him out of springwood and that he killed all the kids of elm street because they took her from him he le- and then he leads her out of the basement and well he goes out of the basement and she's like still on the ground and we see that oh they're at the shelter now and she's like but you can't leave springwood and he's like well there's an elm street in every town which this movie literally created a problem just to solve it, which is the, one of the most annoying writing things ever. It was never what do an you established. Mean? It was never an established rule that he couldn't leave Springwood until this oh, movie. Oh, I see what you mean. And then yeah. they went. It wasn't like that. Like became like it, yeah. I guess it's a central plot. He had to take him to Springwood to make him leave. But like it was literally just there to be there. Like he gets out of Springwood. Like if he never got out of Springwood and that's part of the story, fine. But he gets out of Springwood. So what's the point? What's the point of that whole stupid convoluted convoluted plot? <sighs> Cause now there's there's an elm, this really weird looking Elm Street sign in front of the of the shelter, um, and now Tracy uh, wakes up at her old home, and um, trigger warning if you've um, ever dealt with abuse. Um, specifically, like, sexual abuse. Um, Tracy's dad is a total creeper and, like, tries to, like, force himself on her in this scene. In a scene that, like, we're talking about all this zany, overly campy, 
stupid yeah. crap this movie did, and then they went. This is the, the most tonally inconsistent part of the like, movie. Like, so great, like, so egregiously, like, gr- like this scene wouldn't fit in like the darkest in the first movie because it honestly feels almost too dark for even that movie. But then it's in the silliest movie. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh-huh. She, what if we after, just yeah. toss in a little bit of casual familial abuse? Yeah, and he's like really creepy to her and like trying to tell him like trying to like he gets all like up on her, he ends up touching her, and then eventually she, what about giving she, give daddy some of the honey. Yeah, and then yeah. she snaps and lines she, along that. Yeah, and then she snaps and she beats him like senseless with a kettle to the point where he, once again to a point of absurd Looney Tunes esque humor. His face is all mangled like Daffy Duck would be. Yeah. Like, Dude, yeah. He looked like, or like he looks like Daffy Duck, or like um, one of the characters from Spy <laughs> Kids, like the villains yeah. in that movie. Like this is so like over the top. Right after this super dark scene, it's like this movie is. It's just it's so much more egregious to have such a dark scene in such a silly movie. Yeah, it really calls attention to the fact that this movie doesn't know quite what it wants mm-hmm. to be yeah that's a good assessment um so then after she beats him up he starts to get up with that mangled face and then he turns to freddy so she tries to beat him up but he gets the upper hand so she runs over to the stove and she burns herself awake and now we're with doc at his office and he, he tosses her like a band-aid yeah no, there you we're go. not that. Like we're not that scene so. yet. First, we oh, have Doc's sorry. dream yeah. scene. We're at, we're actually in, we're at Doc's office, but in his dream right now, and he hears Tracy calling for him over by the lockers. But wait, it's actually not Tracy. It's Freddie using her voice, and then he beats him down a bunch. But oh, sorry, no, he he start sorry. Doc ends up beating down Freddie with a bat before. Freddy tells him that he can't. Wait. He can't die. Yeah, he can't die, and then he counts down the ways that he's been killed. With I don't I don't remember that. There's three of them, and he cuts off his fingers as he, he goes. And they bring back the the green goo blood. Yeah. yeah. Call back to the first. Call back to a scene in the first movie that was done better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he. Um, then he also. He finds out, we find out the reason he can't die is because he mentions that the dream people who gave him the power <laughs> and they gave him this job, they're the, the ones who said he couldn't people. die. He refers to them as the dream people. We find out later that those are the dream demons that the doc referenced. Uh. Remember that scene? No? You forgot about it? That's fair. They're and a little doc, trio of, of worms. Yeah. Clay yeah little, worms. Worms little is one dream. way to define them. I would describe them more as sperm. Sperms. Um, they definitely are more sperm shaped and dream demon sperm. Yeah. Uh, but we'll get to them. We're not quite more there yet, sadly. Um, but as doc is like having this fight, uh, as about to like, Freddy looks like he's about to maybe kill him after he tells him this little bit about him and he pulls off a piece of his, you know, his sweater, sweater. and he gets woken up by the alarms he set to get himself out of this dream. He, I guess knew he was going to this dream. He was using it to test this theory. Um, and which he's got the what's sweater this, in real life. What's this Whoa. theory? It's this crazy new concept that if you pull oh, Freddy out of no. the dream world, you can kill him in the real... Like, that was the plot of the first movie. Why are we yeah. acting like this is a big reveal? I understand it's a reveal to the characters. I do. I get it. But they play it like it's a big deal. But yes. we all, as the viewers, are like, well, yeah, no, duh, Nancy did that. Actually, technically, it didn't work. Because Freddy's still here. But... <laughs> But now it's like, yes, it's such a back to square one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what's not it's... back to square one, though? Um, and that's Doc giving her some magic 3D glasses. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, I want to hear, you, I wanna hear what you have to think about this part. Because one. fun, not fun, but not, but just a part, the reason this scene is here is because one of the things New Line wanted to do uh. to make this movie stand out besides just telling people hey we're killing freddy to try to get people in because the last movie didn't do well financially they also wanted to make some more money by making part of this movie a 3d movie so it's the connection to wizard of oz which famously and revolutionarily did that with color and black and white you know sure 
I guess. I guess Which I is the only reason to like this decision. It's like, oh, it's homage to Wizard of Oz, but it's like um, an 80s version. You know, instead of doing color, now we're like, going to do it. This movie came out in like the very early 90s. And, 91. Like, the 80s boom. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, the 80s boom already happened. We already watched Jason 3D. Jaws 3D already existed. Like, 3D was already a thing people knew about. So doing it in the middle of this movie feels just weird. But, I, you know, you, honestly, you're probably right. It probably was supposed to allude to Wizard of Oz. But what it ends up doing is just looking stupid as she puts on 3D glasses in this movie. Because in the dream, they're magic and they can be whatever she wants them to be. Which means they're nothing, actually. Actually, they, the dream, never they literally used. never do yeah. anything. They which just in, disappear. In the dream, they become invisible. Oh. And non-existent, really. Yeah. They dissolve. Uh, what are you talking about? Exactly she what I looks at her hand and goes, whoa. It's like I can see my hand, which is always in 3D <laughs> when I look at it. But for the that's audience, crazy. that scene was coming out at them. Whoa. Jeez. Stupid. Yes. <laughs> um, And she goes into the dream, though, and Doc counts her in from like 10 and they make it all the way to one in like kind of a slow count. I feel like just maybe to pad this movie a little bit because I don't see why he needed to count her in, but he does. And like from 10 and makes it to one and you're like, all right, okay, cool. Uh, now Maggie's in the dream world and there's this, I guess we, to be fair, we forgot to mention this earlier, but in the conversation where doc was talking about the dream demons earlier, he did have a poster on his wall of a statue of these dream demons. Um, and now she... A sculpted statue. Yeah. Now this dream statue is, like, moving a little bit. And this mm. scene, they don't look like sperm. They do look more like worms or snakes. Wormies. Um, And she walks through them into, like, this statue thing. And, oh, it's Freddy's head! Whoa! And he's at the camera! Now Whoa! Freddy's I guess that's... Brain. Maybe that's a 3D scene, I guess. It just seems weird. Um... And, yeah, I guess, because she's now inside of his head. Um, and, yeah. Um, and we get some, th at this point, after she walks in, we get some 3D dream demons as they come towards the screen. And then yeah. she goes into, <laughs> she goes into the core of his brain. And it's, uh, it's real electric everywhere, and she can't go anywhere because of the electricity. But she has a conductive bracelet on, so she just throws that at something and, Stops the electricity. Her handy dandy copper bracelet that she but has it's just, on. This is another one of the. Like, this is a much smaller one and is, I guess, slightly more forgivable because of how small it is. They literally just said, well, there's this electric problem. So she has a bracelet to get rid of it. It's like, why did you even make the electric problem? Why did she have to problem solve here? I mean, why? movies progress with obstacles, right? Like. But, like, this one feels so forced. Like, because we... It's, I, I, I know like, what you mean. I'm trying to figure out, like, like it why... established it... the bracelet before. If there was a scene that established her bracelet, then it's justific justified. But it's just or, there to be Or, there. hear me out, if her magic 3D glasses became a piece of metal, she could destroy this mm. with. That's yeah. story progression. But instead, but no. she just accidentally realizes her bracelet is able to stop... To get electrified, so she throws it at a box... To destroy the dream electricity, because I guess dream electricity still acts like normal electricity and can be over short circuited like that. That's what cheapens them so much is that like the problem and the solution come at once. Yeah, it's yeah. just hand in hand. I think that's they what makes them. Introduce them so... together side yeah. by side. Yes. Okay. Like here's this problem and also the solution, and there goes the problem. All right, on like, we go. It literally like yeah, and like it doesn't even add that much time. Like it adds like a minute. Like, you could have just cut this minute and it would have changed nothing about this movie. This is like somebody writing their college essay and they just wrote very <laughs> a few more times to lengthen the... It didn't really add anything, but mm. it it did technically add length. Or like they went the poison into... made yeah, specifically it's just, for Cusco. It's, it's so... Cusco's poison. But now it's time to get into some more weird scenes as we try to humanize Freddy because she's going into his memories, oh my baby. Gosh. And we cut yeah. to first. We cut to little Freddy, little kid Freddy, and he's killing a hamster or a mouse. I couldn't yeah. quite tell. I think it's supposed to be a hamster. It's probably uh, a hamster. Yeah, he kills. A and hamster. then his classmates yeah. mock his parents. Yeah, he kills. Yeah, he kills a hamster with a hammer, which you know, hey, that's a sign of a serial killer killing small animals. That's not good. Yeah. See, we're not humanizing Freddy. But then we immediately, not to just show that Freddy's always been broken. We go, hey, but then he gets mocked relentlessly for being. <laughs> 
the bastard son of a hundred mm-hmm. maniacs. And you're like, yeah. well, I mean, like, obviously that doesn't justify what he does later, but he kind of explains it a little bit. You're like, well, no wonder this guy felt like an outcast and it became a horrible person. He was treated he like a horrible person. does explain that later. That very thing is like, you saw what they did to me. They made fun of me he, when I was he, a kid. He tries to use that as he's literally like has the glove behind his back to show that he yeah, really did Yeah, brandishing his glove. Yeah. But it's just like, it's, another, it's a lot like the whole, we've had this discussion before, so I'll only touch on it for like a second. It was the same reason I had a flaw with the Bastard Son of a Hundred Maniacs. It feels like it's trying to justify why Freddy's evil, which I don't care about. I don't care about why Freddy's evil. Sure, I guess maybe it's more justified because he was treated like crap as a kid, but who cares? I just want to watch Freddy kill kids. That's the whole point of these movies, is weird dreamscapes where Freddy kills kids. Hopefully some of them are well acted. (laughs) Hopefully. Instead, we get backstory on a lot of it. Because now we go into the next dream. And it's Teen Freddy, and he's cutting his stomach all up because he's a, he's a masochist. Say this. Which one's which? He's a masochist. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, and he's, he's probably yeah, a sadomasochist. Yeah, pro- yes. And he starts cutting, up his arm, cutting his body, and then his stepdad comes in, and what? Who's that? That's Alice Cooper as his stepdad. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh. Alice Cooper's here. <laughs> Okay. Good for you, Here's Alice Cooper. You're, you're in this movie. And once again, we're trying to humanize Freddy and justify his evil because his, his stepdad was abusive. See? That's why he became a child murderer. Because he was abused as a kid. What What kind of message? First of all, what kind of message is that? You know? <laughs> Are you being abused as a kid? <laughs> Kill some other kids. What? <laughs> no! <laughs> but, yeah, let's just... I mean, maybe it's you not... get a really cool 3D shot of a barber knife. We do. Oh, wait, no, it's not that cool. No, it wasn't. Um, yeah, oh. he cuts he cuts him off screen, and kills his stepdad. Um, now we cut to what's the next scene? We cut. Now we watch as Fred Krueger is burned alive, and then we've seen for and the then first the time demons enter. Ever. Yeah. Yes. And then the dream yeah. demons show up and give him his killing job. They're like, hey, you want you want what you want? He's like, I want everything. And they're like, all right, cool. And they hop in. Like, I want it all. And they hop inside of him and they turn him into the dream demon. Also, I've just now realized we forgot to mention during, I think, the little, the little her scene, she watches her mom get killed by Fred. I forgot oh, yeah. to mention that. I thought it came later when I didn't see it. I must have just skipped over a line or two in my notes. Her mom, he also killed his first, like... Needed to take her medicine. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, sorry. I, I Well, it's, it's ordered in a strange way because I I want to say that it comes after... Oh, you're right. Body. It's about to happen. I apologize for my saying I forgot it. It's literally about to happen. <laughs> yeah. Because it should have happened before this scene, which would have been what made sense. If it sense. was going to be chronological, yeah. Um, but yeah, so she, they give him his killing job. Now we're hanging out with little Catherine... Or, yeah, I guess at this point she's Catherine. Later she'll be Maggie. I, later in the notes when she's an adult, I call her Maggie because that's what her name is at that point. But at this point, little Catherine, with a C, obviously, um, is watching Freddy kill her mom. And then he threatens her that he'll do the same if, you know, she doesn't, you know, uh, what, he tells her to, you know, you won't say anything. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, you won't tell anyone, which is what, his, what her mom was yelling earlier. But I guess for her, that's enough. For her, his 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 wife, she had to die, because how dare she yeah. be snooping through his stuff? She should have known better. Yeah, well, it's the 1960s. Every husband's looking to kill his wife. I'm not looking for any old reason, really. Nope. Uh, now, <laughs> now, now we're in a scene where Maggie is in like a little boiler room area, and Freddie and Maggie start their little final fight, and uh, Freddie tries to to stop her as they get. Like he tries to pull himself in, but they but she grabs onto him, and they see that in the real world, so they pull them out of there. But then, once they're in the real world, she, he's not there. Which, once again... Oh, no, it didn't work. ...is a thing that literally they did in the first movie when they <laughs> she thought she pulled him out, and then he did. Yeah. And then he was there. This movie is so bad. Plagiaristic. It's so bad. The f- There's so many times where just... Uh, let's just repeat the things from the other movies that were better. People like those ones, right? And it's like, yeah, we did like those movies more, sure, but like... Do your own thing. Can you go back and get Peter Jackson to do his script? Because that sounded different. Oh, we also 
didn't go over the the really cool scene where they're they're arming themselves I, I, to fight Freddy. I, I, it's not that we didn't go over it. We haven't got. It's literally the next scene. I thought they pulled him out after they did the armory scene. Nope. It's once they're in the real world. She goes, "My 3D glasses aren't here," which means we're still having to fight him. And then they go to get mm. the equipment. Mm. Um, and yeah, they go to the the scene because we have, remember that one line where they took away the pipe bomb from the kid earlier. Like, shouldn't he get that to the cops? They're like, oh, they're, uh, we, they're we all tied keep, up with cops stuff. Yeah, so they, we go over to their literal armory they have here, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. they just start pulling out a bunch of different weapons, um, one of which is so egregious as this is literally, I think, the most egregious moment in a 3D movie I've ever seen. They are hey, look at this! Yes, Tracy <laughs> doesn't just put the thing right in front of her face at the camera like, so many other movies have done. Like I get that's a it's stupid, but that's a 3D movie thing. I get that. Right. She yeah. literally she says, "Now look at this," and you're like, "Thanks." I wouldn't have saw you pointing it in my face if you didn't tell me to look at it. Also, apparently, Chris, what was the fact? Fun fact about that knife? <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, the knife that she points at the screen is a trench knife. Uh, which, if you live in the wonderful state of Texas, is the only kind of knife that is illegal to carry. Uh, you could carry a sword, but a trench knife, that's a no-no, because it's got, it's got brass knuckles built into yeah. it. So that's definitely a weapon. Mm. Yeah. And not just a cutting tool. I mean, it does have brass knuckles. Yeah. I would argue it's not just... But I would also argue the same thing about <laughs> no. the sword, which is also like yeah. legal to open carry, because this uh -huh. is a weird Nobody thing. Nobody does. It's disappointing. No. Um, I want to see swords everywhere. You don't see them. Anyway. Uh, I'm sorry. Right. I'll start carrying swords for you. Uh, Maggie Thank also you. gets a spike bat. Because, once again, that's something they had to confiscate from a kid at some point. That's the thing. Some of these mm -hmm. weapons, it's like, wait, some kid made a nail bat and they have that? What? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. That little Negans. Yeah. Little Negans from Mock and Dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this movie. Um, then she walks up on a Human Freddy. In this like little caged area, like for storage, which is literally just in this storage area, so they can lock her off from the other characters. Uh, uh, but yeah, she gets locked off from them, and he's as a human Freddy, and he tries to say that it, you know, it wasn't his fault. Look at his childhood; it's obviously his childhood's fault. It's not his fault that he's bad. But then, as he's saying that, he's like messing with his glove behind his back, and then he goes to try to swipe her, but she hits it with the bat. And she knocks it right at the camera, and it goes flying at the camera for a while before hitting the yeah. ground. Um, and then it makes lots of sparks. Yeah. And then she like looks away from him, talks to the other characters for a moment, but then we look back around, and oh, Freddy's on the ceiling, and he's still Demon Freddy. Um, Water Freddy. Yeah. Yeah. And he he goes to try to choke Maggie, um, but Maggie headbutts him, and then she's like just ho not wearing a glove, holding a glove. She slashes him with it a couple times, saying, like, this is for John, this is for Spencer, and then she tries to go for Carlos, or I might be in the wrong order, but she doesn't get to the third one, he stops her before she can do whichever third kid she mentions. Um, then they, after he does that, they start rolling around on the ground for a little bit, and then she bites his nose? Yeah. And we see it stretched. Yeah, it's like, alright, okay, I mean, she's wanting to get out of that. Um, then she breaks his hand, <laughs> and like it's like all backwards yeah. and like a stick. Yeah. yeah, and there's a couple shots of him like fixing his hand um, throughout this next scene as he gets he gets to get he gets his glove back, and she then starts throwing knives and shurikens at him. Yeah, we get this really With comical scene. Yeah, well, she's, where she's an uh, knife what's knife. her name? Tracy yes. like is tossing your weapons from outside. Yes, just like chucking them left and right. <laughs> And then she's like, yeah, an expert at throwing a uh, shuriken. Yeah, you understand. Which, like circus style. I don't style. know if you've ever thrown uh, a knife or shuriken before, but it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> You're but, not uh, Catherine Kruger. Yeah, I'm not Catherine Kruger, apparently. She's They're got an blood. innate ability yeah. to throw weapons. Um, then she also shoots him with a crossbow in the leg. <laughs> um, yeah. Then she takes like a, a big knife. Longs. Or it might be like a, it looks like a really long like knife. It might be a piece of rebar. I felt more like rebar than it was in the shot. Bar. 
crowbar. I think it was a crowbar, yeah. Yeah, and she like, stabs it into his hand, into his chest. Like, it looks pretty cool. It's one of the few, like, good special effects in this movie. That's one of the big flaws, I feel, with this movie, is there's not good special mm-hmm. effects. This whole they series is a special yeah. effects showcase, for the most part. And this movie just went, what if we just didn't? And it's like, alright, sure, I guess, what if we didn't? Uh-huh. What if we had video game? <laughs> yeah, and then she taunts him for a little while. He taunts her, sorry, for a little while about using the glove before she decides to use the glove. And, you know, he kind of tells her, like, hey, you know, it runs in the family. And, you know, he gives a classic Creepy Freddy line of, like, let daddy show you how to use it. Which, that's the line that throws her over the edge. And she runs over and stabs him in the gut, I believe, twice. Or she stabs it in deeper. There's a second sound effect. I'm not sure if it's a deeper stab or a second stab um Mm. then after she stabs him uh tracy has that pipe bomb lit and hands it over to her so she puts it in his stomach and they they all run away but right before she runs away she tells him happy father's day and gives him a kiss how sweet how nice um then doc tracy and maggie they run away and freddie goes out with one last quip because that's it's freddie baby so he goes (laughs) oh kids and he explodes and his head flies yeah. at the camera. But then out of his mouth comes another one of his head for some reason. And then out of that mm. mouth comes... Another one of his heads. No, no, and that, then it disintegrates. No, it's only two heads. Out of that, it, then it disintegrates into oh. our, the, dream uh, the dream demon sperm babies. Uh, and they're flying around yeah. and laughing. And then... Yeah, I guess they're not too upset that their avatar <laughs> is dead now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then her... Um. 3D no. glasses reappear, letting the audience know to take theirs off. And uh, Maggie says, Freddy's dead. And we get a montage that's, of all the moments over the closing credits as an Iggy Pop song about Freddy plays, which, okay, yeah. movie. <laughs> Let's get a like relatively well, like a really well-known artist at the time to make a song about this for this movie. Mm-hmm. It's no Dawkins. Well, he's a cultural opinion. icon. He's no Dawkins. Um, <laughs> uh, what haven't I said? Um, yeah, this movie's it's bad. I will say my surprise. My surprising thing is I am one of the few people out there who does not think this movie was worse than the last movie. There are so many people talk about how this movie is so atrocious. It's so much worse. And like how the last movie started the really bad Freddy movies. But this movie, it hits over the head, is even worse. I think they're equally bad. They both have a couple moments I like. But for the most part, I hate them. I don't want to ever watch them again. I probably never will unless I'm like trying to introduce this franchise to someone who's never seen it. Which I'm probably never going to do. So, (laughs) I'm probably never going to see this again. And I will say... The, I guess to be positive, the things I liked about it are the things that most of the internet hates about it. I actually kind of like Looney Tune Freddy. I get that it's not what Freddy was, but I think it's not the best graphics because it's, you know, a movie from 92. But I do find it kind of funny when his body, like, hole is still there in the dreamscape. Like, in the like classic Looney Tunes, the wall keeps the hole oh. at the beginning of the movie. I like, I kind of like him as the wicked witch is it stupid and weird yeah but i don't mind um i like him dropping him on as like on the acme spikes like and literally looking at the camera and taking a deep breath afterwards because it was so straining on him like it is so looney tunes for that what i don't like we've talked about throughout the whole thing there's a lot i don't like overall i don't like this movie but um Mm. yeah that's my thoughts Chris. Yeah, I don't, I don't really think this movie had anything going for it. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, it, like I said earlier, I, I really feel like this movie just didn't know what it wanted to be, aside from a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, and barely even that. Uh, I mean, it does have you know all the the qualities of a Nightmare on Elm Street sequel, which is. Uh, Freddy becoming consistently more campy um, and introducing new plot devices that did not exist in the previous movies. Uh, 
and also becoming progressively worse. Uh, so it did keep all those things going. Um, and aside from that, uh, I, I really don't feel like it would have wanted to be, as is evidenced by the uh, incredibly tonally inconsistent scene with Tracy and her dad. Uh, and then everything else surrounding it just being complete and total nonsense. Uh, so yeah, uh, really bad movie, uh, and just really goofy at times, and, but not like goofy in a way that I enjoyed a lot, uh, watching this right on the heels of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, because that, that movie does it well, in my opinion, uh, and this movie, not, not as much so. That's fair. Uh, Isaiah? You said that more diplomatically than me. I think this movie really blows a big one. Uh, the, the last movie is better. It it would be... The comparison would be much more straightforward if it weren't for the atrocious dialogue and acting of the last movie. Mm, yeah. um, every other aspect of the last movie is better. Uh, I think in those two particular elements, this movie kind of skimmed past it. Um in that, like, the dialogue feels... Uh, a little bit more coherent? Typical. It's it's uh, definitely, it's certainly more coherent. Yeah, I, I'm, out of the way, I think the dialogue is better in this movie than the last one. It's more coherent. I uh, think conversations make sense. They're not just a jumbled collection of teenage catchphrases. They're a little bit more than that, you know? And it is coherent. Characters each have their own voices, and, you know, they're... They don't have the most dimension, but they're there. they got their own voices, and they interact in a natural way. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's a step above... I'm trying to find the, the defining line because previously, like, like in the last movie, for example, like we've seen where we introduce the smallest, most insignificant trait for a character, like a catchphrase or like, oh, he's he, he draws or something like that. And then that just becomes like, okay, we're done writing this character now. That's it. This movie it did a little bit better than that, but but not by much. And it's hard for me to figure out where the distinction is exactly between, like, I don't know. I guess the depth of character, hard to say. Um, but in any event, I I, I re I'm old enough to remember, in in the days of yore, like four weeks ago, when the characters are really well thought out, the story was well thought out, and it was approaching, or attempting to approach a meaning. The, about like young life or American society or what have you, you know, that's, it was open to different interpretation. We're talking about this movie this... has a great message. If you are bullied as a child, kill children. Hmm. I don't, I mean, no, I'm, I'm, that's, me, <laughs> that's, that's me jokingly agreeing with like, yes. No, no, like, I understand. This yeah. There's really, there's not, my there's speechlessness there. is like trying to, I'm really trying to like, Plumb the depths of this movie and think like, okay, there's got to be something here. But, think of something worthwhile to say about the movie, despite the fact that this movie had nothing worthwhile to say. Yeah, yeah there's nothing worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you said it better than I did. Um, yeah, I and like Austin daughter, pointed guys. out, the crutch that this whole series has been leaning on has been really cool visual effects. It's practical, you know, the practical gore. That's always kind of cool. At the very least, I can get the cheap thrill from that from any of the Night on Elm Street movie. On this one, no. You know, we see the invisible impalement after, I think they show the visible impalement too. And um, I think that is about the peak of the the gory physical effects of this movie. And that would have been like the, the valley, head, the trough uh, the head explosion, of the other movies. All, like, it's not great. It's nothing close to what the other movies did. But like the way his like head starts bulging before it explodes for Carlos, that's a little gory. Okay. But like, you know, I'm, yeah, not saying, that that, I'm not saying that as like, that is adding to the that's the best it gets is those two yeah. possibly like yeah it's yeah. if you want fantastical kills this movie isn't it and yeah no. what else does it really have what else have the last like two nightmare films had nothing Not but much. that yeah. yes uh, that is the last thing that they have clung to and i mean the last thing that i would mention once again like austin you kind of touched on it uh i don't have a preference between sympathetic villains and purely malevolent villains and Freddy started out as a purely malicious, malevolent villain. And I dug that. I mean, and I, I appreciate when the other kind is done well, too. You know, you, you see the other stories, and they're just, you know, there's a difference. It's not like one's better than the other. But 
it would be nice to keep the to main, the titular character of this series like static you know you can't be both and like that's the thing is like, it can't be both and this movie yeah and the, the, this isn't and they the first try movie so hard to make them but both. like it's like he's literally like killed thousands of children i don't care i mean a thousand but he's killed a lot of children i don't well, it's down full by this yeah, movie i mean i yeah. don't care yeah. if his I daughter was taken away from him one because that was literally after he after already he was already a serial people. killer he already killed kids, and that's what his wife discovered. And he killed his wife, and like he killed his uh, yeah he uh, he killed an abusive stepdad. But guess what? I'm sorry. I know this might sound crazy, but ch- child abuse is not worthy of murder. Like it's horrible, it's wrong. But I would not. Like, I wouldn't even call those equal to each other. Like yes, maybe you could argue in the moment, heat of the moment, he made a decision. And I'm not trying to like demon like, but like it's there's no this movie is I agree I agree wholeheartedly this movie sucks, uh, it might it probably is worse than the last movie they're all the last two movies though are both like a dumpster fire and deserve yeah. to never oh, be watched absolutely. again, um, for their own completely separate reasons, um, and thankfully, from all accounts I think I've ever heard, the next movie is better. Some people love the next movie. Some people only like the next movie. But next week, we will be watching Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So, tune in next week to hear us talk about that. Also, before we do finish the sign-up, as we kind of alluded to earlier, but I'll just double down on it explaining, we have an awesome show on this channel now that debuted this past Friday, if you're watching this on YouTube on Monday, of mm. Horrible Commentaries, which is a mystery science you know 3000 slash riff track style commentary track of me and chris joking and crapping on and having fun with mo- hor- this one will be specifically horror movies we did the first episode on killer clowns from outer space um there will be more coming forward their schedule is every second and fourth week what the heck uh, what the heck Bobby. <laughs> but uh yeah uh a little plug out of the way. Also, patreon.com slash horrorboys if you want to support this channel. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next week with New Nightmare, which is, there's no, I don't think there's anyone who dislikes it more than this. And hey, you know what? At least that's a positive. So we'll watch that next week. Uh, bye-bye! Bye-bye. Bye.